Hey guys, welcome back. Typically on this day at this time, I do a Beyond the Dividend video, and I'm not going to do that today. I'm not saying I'm not going to do Beyond the Dividend videos any longer, just going to spread them out a little bit more often and not do them every week at this time. Instead, today we're going to talk about something that I've kind of been thinking about, and this is a video that I'm going to do that's directed at the younger group out there. Those of you that either in their very early 20s, some of you maybe haven't even hit the age of 20 yet, I want to talk about the power of compounding interest or compounding the return in your investment and the gift that you have of time. Stick around. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you've known that I've never ever said that there's wrong ways to invest and that the type of investing that you do is what you need to determine works best for you. But I guess what this video is going to be about is making sure that you understand the different types of investing and the different ways that you can grow your capital and your dividends. And I've noticed in some of the social communities that I'm on, namely the Blossom Group, there seems to be a very, very high desire for high yield returns from people's investments. And of course, we all want that. But is that coming at any sort of sacrifice to something else that could be working for you and working better for you? And again, this is not me saying that uh, high yield returns are not good, because if that works for you and that's what you desire and that's what you want, that's perfect. Good for you. However, make sure that you understand the other types of investing that you can do and see if that might not be a better fit for you because there are circumstances where high yields are great um, i think more though of retired people who are looking for those investments as a cash income as a supplement to any pensions or such that they might be receiving but what I want to talk about today is the, as I said, the power of time, especially for those folks who are in their early 20s or, as I said, haven't even hit 20 yet. And I want to go over a couple of um, some graphs and just show you how that works for somebody that's at a very young uh, spot in their life and in their investing journey and at a young age. So what I want to show you is a company called Severia, and this is a website that I use. It's called Fast Graphs. Fast Graphs will show you all kinds of uh, financial information for any stock that you're looking at getting into or that you're already into. And in my um, portfolio here between my wife and I, I have both of them in here. Um, this is a company called Severia, a Canadian company. And as you can see, these little green dots down on the bottom, these are the purchase dates of when I bought stock. So on June 7th of 2022, I bought my first Severia stock. I bought one only at $14.56. And I'm just going to click that so that'll lock in. My very last purchase was on February 1st of 2023. And I bought 100 shares at $15.03. And I'm just going to scroll along. This black line here is the price um, at the close every day uh, on the TSE. So if I was to take all of the shares and I was to sell them as of the last business close on Friday, um, I would have sold them at $16.68. So if I click on that, that shows us that I've made an 18% annualized return um, with growth of 14.5%. So when I hear people talk about the high yields, and I know there's one specific stock that I won't get into, um, we're talking about monthly dividend payments, monthly dividend yield giving back to you, you on a monthly basis. And that's great. Um, and I've said in past videos, okay, what are you doing with that money? However, that's what's really important. Um, but here's an example of a stock that has a combined return. When you look at the growth capital and you look at the dividend that Severia pays, certainly not in the 12% range, I believe it's in the 3% range, but over that amount of time. So basically just over a year um, from when I started to purchase this stock, um, this is an annualized return of 18% when you include the dividend and the, um, the growth of the capital. I'm just going to click on another screen here. This is Fortis. So this is a better example. And if I look at Fortis, again, over on the right here, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. I've made some purchases in the last couple of years. 
But I want to go back to 2003, and let's just pick somewhere in the neighborhood here in June. Okay, so in June of 2003, if I click that link and pretend, say, that I bought June 13th, I bought some stocks in 2003, and I was to then take those and sell those in June of 2023, you can see there, and Fortis is a pretty conservative stock, um, very, very well loved by many investors for its consistency, but it's not always a high, high return. You can see here over 20 years, 9.4% uh, annualized return. And again, that's not hitting the 12 or 14% that the uh, the high yield is paying you back every, every month. However, 9.4% annualized return for 20 solid years I'm going to show you what that turns into so that you can see. Okay, so if you open up your favorite Excel sheet, you can do this manually. Or if you go online, you can find any number of free compound interest or compound return. Basically the same thing. Uh, so on this sh screen here, uh, you can see I've put in $10,000, no additional contributions, um, and an annualized growth rate of 9.4% and 20 years of growth with that compounding being done annually. You can see that over 20 years, your $10,000 turns into over $60,000. And in a case of Fortis here, that's saying that we haven't reinvested any of the dividends. That's just the $10,000 you originally put in, but Fortis is getting you a 9% return every year. So let's say for argument's sake, your dividends that you get in Fortis, let's say it's $100 and you get it every, uh, every quarter, so that would be, say, $400 um, additional contributions. So in this case, we would change this then to $400. And by reinvesting the dividends, you're now saying that you're going, or sorry, your $10,000 and reinvesting the dividends is going to turn into $81,000 because of that growth rate. And that's what's really, really important here. You need to see that the money that you're getting on an annual, or sorry, a monthly high yield dividend paying stock, it's giving you that cash now. But in a lot of cases, and in many cases, you're not getting the capital growth. So um, as I said earlier in the video, uh, high yield income type bearing stocks are great, but I think they're more geared towards folks that are in retirement or nearing retirement if that's the case, though, and you need it when you're in your 20s, absolutely, it's a great return. But just understand, you may not get the capital return that you're hoping for. And down the road, depending on what you did with that monthly dividend that you're getting, if you just simply went and paid off debt, I mean, that's a great thing. But your $10,000 doesn't turn into anything other than $10,000. And if you're going to do that, you may as well just throw it in a bank account, in a savings account, because it pays about the same amount of interest that you may get from these high yield stocks. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Again, this has not been investing advice. I just want to make sure that people understand the different options out there to them. And if you're younger, the power of compounding, as I've just demonstrated, but the real gift of time that you have is so, so on your side right now. As I always ask, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button and that like button. Until next time, take care and we'll talk to you soon.